Hello, thanks for inviting me into your home or office today. Perhaps someday you'll feel comfortable enough to invite me into your bedroom where the real magic happens. Now, Due to the popularity of Ajax and dynamic data loading into our pages, we can add some pretty cool effects to menu systems that call data into our pages dynamically. So before we get into the exercise, let's look at a demo of what we will be making and we'll also look at an example of it placed into an automated home page slideshow program. That way you can get a good feel about what kind of situations you could apply this to. First, let's take a look at the finished product of what you're going to be making in this tutorial. So what happens is the menu marker is on button 1 by default or on the default button. But when the user clicks another button, the little menu marker animates its width and its left position. So its left position matches whatever button it's about to roll over. So you can see the width of this button is much wider than the width of this button. And you can see how the menu marker adjusts its width to match the button. And it also slides along in a nice animated fashion, really letting the user know which section they're viewing. And here it is working in a home page slideshow program. Now watch the button marker. So you can see as it automatically changes sections through the slideshow, the button marker follows in an animated fashion. And I think it's a really cool way to visually show the user what section they're reading or viewing. So we're going to begin with this code. And you can see it's an application that loads dynamic data into a little box according to which button is pressed. But there's no animated menu marker system yet. And that's going to be the real focus of the lesson. So that's why I have all of this stuff in place already. So what happens is every time one of these buttons is clicked, the load content function fires off in JavaScript. This is a representation of the button that's being clicked. So when load content runs here, we have access to the button element. And then all I'm doing is going into the my content div down here and changing it dynamically according to the button. Now what you can do is instead of this static example I have, you can load Ajax data right here. You run an Ajax request if you want to get dynamic data from the server and bring it into the box. Or you can have an array of data directly in your JavaScript. And then each button can show a certain portion of that array. And you can pack all kind of HTML and text into arrays. Okay, so it's a very simple beginning. Now we'll apply the animated button marker to the application. So in the div with ID my menu here that houses all of the little buttons, right above all the little buttons, we're going to add a new div with ID of button marker. And if you render this right now, you won't even see that div. Now let's go up into the CSS and we're going to add a style rule for the button marker div. We're going to make sure its position is absolute. This way it can be animated around the page without affecting the position of other elements on the page. We're going to make its border black, one pixel solid, and then we're going to set the border bottom to none. And that gives you the effect of having a long line with two short lines coming down off of the end of the long line. So basically it's just a rectangle without a bottom border. Now initially, by default, the width is going to be zero because JavaScript is going to be setting the width. The height is going to be a static 10 pixels. The top position is set to 67 and that's what pushes it down to where it needs to live on the page from the top of the page. And its display by default is set to none because JavaScript is going to make it render. JavaScript will set its display to block when needed. Now the next thing we do is set the transition property. That way anytime the left position or the width is changed by JavaScript, for this button marker, it's going to happen in an animated fashion. It won't be just an instant change in those values. It's going to be animated over a period of time, which is half a second in our case. So basically our transition is just set up to animate the width property and the left property whenever they're adjusted in JavaScript. And I'm just using the WebKit prefix for now to make sure it works in Chrome and all the other WebKit based browsers. But this line is the standardized syntax, and that's all we'll need in the future. Now we already have in place the window.addEventListener in JavaScript for the load event of the page. And when that happens, we're going to run a function called initMenu, which is short for initialize the menu. So I'm going to go right here and pop that function into place, function init menu. 
Now this function runs only once when the page is loaded because the window.addEventListener load event is calling that function to run and it only happens when the page is first loaded. We're going to initialize the menu. Really, we're initializing the button marker system for the menu. And you can see in that function, we're targeting the button marker div on the page, which is this little guy right here. And we're setting his style.left equal to the button 1 offset left position. That way, it's over button 1 by default when the page loads. And we're also going to set its width to match the first button when the page loads. And you see I'm putting offset width minus 2 to account for any border that's on the little button marker. Because the button marker is basically just a border for a rectangle, then it's going to be 2 pixels wider than your buttons. So you can just put minus 2 to make sure it exactly matches the width of your buttons. Then finally, we make the button marker display block so it shows on the page. Now remember that init menu function only runs once when the page first loads. That's just to make sure everything is positioned correctly. Now what we're going to do is very, very simple here. We're going to go into the load content function because that's the function that fires off every time any button is clicked. And right above where we're going to be dynamically adding data to that little blue box, according to which button is pressed, we're going to run these two simple lines. We're going to target the button marker div again. We're going to adjust its left position and its width, just like we did here. But this time, we're doing it more dynamically by targeting the button dynamically. So it could be any one of these four buttons. So all we have to do here is put the button object reference. So that way, the little marker can dynamically move between buttons. And that's everything. Let's take a look at it. So you can see the marker is over button 1 by default. When I click button 3, it moves over to that button in an animated fashion. And its width animates and its left position animates. Okay? That's how it works. Very simple. If you enjoyed the video you just watched, click on the subscribe button to tune into Adam's channel. He produces new videos on a regular basis. Below the subscribe button are a few more of his video tutorials that other viewers have found to be helpful or inspiring. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.